Hello, this is Mr. Buffington from Simplify Academy. We are adding and subtracting decimals today. What to expect? We'll talk about place values. It's very important. Then we will do some adding, some subtracting, and some word problems are going to be thrown in there. Super fun! Let's talk about place values. It's important when we're looking at place values that we can name each place value. This will become important later on as well, so try and keep it somewhere in the back of your mind. Don't forget after we finish this lesson. The 1 <clears throat> is in the thousands column. The 2 is the hundreds. Then we have the tens. And this one's sometimes called the ones and also called the units. It's the ones. We'll just call it ones for now, but you will hear units. Um, primarily when we're talking about ratios later on. On the other side of the decimal, once we go farther to the right, we will have tenths, hundredths, thousandths, and ten thousandths. Those are the main um, place values that we are going to use. We actually won't even get to the point of using ten thousandths very much, but let's go ahead and um, talk about why this is important. When you're adding decimals, like these numbers here, 1.3 and 2.5, we could call that 1 and 3 tenths plus 2 and 5 tenths. Whenever this happens, we want to rewrite it. The key thing is that we line up the decimals. Very, very important. It doesn't matter if we line up the 1 and the 2 or the 1 and the 5. Like The numbers don't matter. It's the decimals that are important with this. In this case, it does all line up nicely. And when we line them up like that, we can add straight down. 3 plus 5 is 8. 1 plus 2 is 3. The decimal stays in the straight line, and we're good to go. That's the case when you're adding and subtracting decimals. You line up the decimals, and you could even write the decimal in the answer before you even add or subtract the numbers. When you carry over numbers, they carry over the decimal. Does not matter. The decimals always line up. Let's look at another example. This one is 2 and 3 hundredths plus 15 and 6 tenths. This is when it gets really important to rewrite it and line up the decimals. Because when we line up the decimals, notice how they're offset like that. Right? The 3 is in the hundredths column, and the 6 is in the tenths column. We wouldn't just add 3 plus 6. They're offset. So to help keep this a little bit more clear, it's sometimes helpful to fill in zeros so that all of the numbers seem to at end at the same place. Then drop the decimal straight down and add like normal. Boom, and you're done. See, that part's the adding part's not the hard part. It's making sure that you line up those decimals. Subtracting decimals works the same way. Let's take a look. If I have 20 minus 13.4, and I'm asked to rewrite this, I am going to line up the decimals. Now, with this one, it's a little bit more tricky because the number 20, you don't see a decimal there. However, there is a decimal right at the end, the far right at side of the number. So 20 is the same as 20.0. That makes sense. If you've got $20, you have $20.00, right? Putting a decimal zero on the end does not change the value of a number. It just helps it line up. And in this case, we need it to line up so that we can add 20, or subtract, I'm sorry, 20 minus 13.4 and get our final answer. We're going to need to do some borrowing there, and we'll end up with 6. Point six. Now we're going to practice both adding or and subtracting on the same slide here. I want you to pause the recording, pause and practice. Go ahead and try this one out. See what you get on your own. Go. Welcome back. When I do these questions, I'm going to line up my decimals, fill in the zeros, and then subtract like normal for my final answer here. With the addition, I'm going to line up the decimals, fill in the zeros, and add just like normal. 
And that is exactly how we solve this type of question. It's pretty straightforward, and, and it's mainly adding and subtracting the same way you normally would. The difference is that you have to make sure to line up the decimal at first before moving on. The next type of question that we might get is something like this, 3 tenths plus 24 hundredths. When you get a question like that, you need to write it out in a math way. And here's how we would do that. 3 tenths means that the 3 ends in the tenths column. 24 hundredths means that the number 24 ends in the hundredths place. So we have to know the place values to be able to be writing numbers like this. Other than that, it's filling in zeros and adding. That part's not hard. It's writing it out and lining up the decimal that's actually challenging with this one. Same with the next one, 8 tenths minus 54 hundredths. With this question, we would write it out, fill in the zeros, and solve. And there we go. Now there is one um, decimal type I did not show with this, and I guess I could show right here. And that's if you had, um, if instead of saying 8 tenths, this said 8 hundredths. Wow. <laughs> I'll blame it on um, my messy writing on the, on the pad that I'm using to, to write. But if it said 8 hundredths, we would write that as 0 0.08. So sometimes we do need to fill in zeros so that the number 8 is ending in the hundredths column. That's one, um, one number I realized we didn't um, sh have any examples for, so I just wanted to show you that. Again, the lining up the decimal and adding is the same. It's just that if you do have uh, three hundredths or five hundredths, you just need that zero to fill in the space. It's called a place filler. Now let's go to word problems. I went to the store with $35. I bought a calculator for $12.86. How much do I have left? Hmm. Well, I had 35 and I subtracted $12.86 because that's what I bought. So I would set this up as a subtraction question. I start with 35 and I subtract 12.86. I have to fill in the decimal and zeros after 35. Notice that putting that decimal there does not change the value of 35. It just makes it nice and even for when I want to subtract. Then I'm going to need to do some borrowing and I would subtract and get $22.14. For my final word problem, I made it a little bit more complicated. Remember, we're talking about how to add and subtract decimals, but we can use that skill to actually solve some pretty complicated questions. Let's take a look. To buy a new basketball, my parents told me I could keep any change I found while cleaning the house and cars. In the car, I found $1.72. In the minivan, I found $4.32. In the couch cushions, I found $2.84. How much more do I need to buy my basketball that costs $15.45. This is a real world problem, right? You're gathering money, maybe you're earning a little bit, and you're adding up all of the amounts, and then you need to figure out how much do I still need. The first step is, like I said, adding up the amounts that you've collected. So in this um, particular question, you're going to add $1.72, $4.32, $2.84. Line up the decimals, add up the numbers. You should get $8.88. Now, the question about how much more do I need to buy the basketball? This is a question of difference. What's the difference between $15.45 and the $8 that you have? When you're talking about difference, you are subtracting. So there it is with the subtraction question. And then we line up the decimals and subtract. 
now we have to think back to what is it that I was looking for? Because after you do usually do several steps of math questions, we have to ask ourselves, what is it that I'm looking for? And this is what I was looking for. How much more do I need? Oh, hello, basketball. So I am $6.57 shy of being able to get my basketball. There you go. I need another $6.57. Maybe if my parents had another couple cars, then they could, I could clean them out and find the money. A couple of things to remember. First off, place values are going to be important with decimals. They're going to be important later on. So you have to remember what the place values are. Second off, line up the decimals. When you're adding or subtracting, you need to add them up. And the third thing is with word problems, I want you to read them carefully to make sure that you answer all parts of them and that your answer makes sense. I hope that video was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.